2016 Green Party candidate Dr. Jill Stein wants to legalize cannabis, decriminalize all drugs, and overhaul the criminal justice system. When it comes to cannabis, Stein has been an outspoken advocate of legalization for years. At a 2012 third party debate hosted by Aura TV, Stein explained why the plant should be legal. As a medical doctor, uh, previously in clinical practice for about 25 years, I can say with a real understanding of the science and the health impacts that marijuana is a substance that is dangerous because it's illegal. It's not illegal on account of being dangerous because it's not dangerous at all. It is well understood that the health impacts of marijuana are mainly the public health and safety impacts from the illegal drug trade associated with marijuana prohibition. So the most important thing we can do to get rid of the health problems associated with marijuana is to legalize it. On day one, a president, if she wanted to, could instruct the DEA to do a really radical, radical thing. Use science in determining what substances will and will not be scheduled. Because the minute science is used, marijuana is off the schedule. Stein also pledges to expunge records for previous cannabis convictions and legalize hemp. Not only that, but if elected, she wants to decriminalize all drugs, release nonviolent drug offenders and offer them treatment, abolish private prisons, three strikes laws, the death penalty, and mandatory sentencing, stop prison construction, and provide alternatives to incarceration among other priorities. Our current system basically compounds the war on drugs. It makes it worse, and we can fix this now. It's an absolute crime that people are in jail for using drugs that are less harmful than um, nicotine and alcohol. The whole drug war is completely baseless, foundless, immoral, racist, and it needs to be transformed into a public health agenda and people who are currently serving time on account of using recreational substances uh, who've not been involved in violent crime uh, should have their sentences commuted. Furthermore, Stein recognizes the racial disparities in the economic and criminal justice systems and has plans to fix them. The African American community has really been taking it on the chin and it's been somewhat a continuous line from slavery to lynchings to uh, Jim Crow to redlining to, um, uh, to the war on drugs and now police brutality which is really not new, what's new is recording it on, uh, on cell phone cameras. So it's really important that it be stopped. So to start with, uh, we call for every community to have a citizen review board so that uh, police can be watched and records evaluated and perpetrators addressed early on instead of allowed to be recurring offenders. We call for investigators, full-time investigators, so that every case of death and injury at the hands of police is investigated. We call for actually ending the war on drugs, which is a racist war on drugs and has filled the prisons with over two million people, uh, a huge portion of which are nonviolent drug offenders. And as a medical doctor myself, you know, I'm well aware that if you want to deal with drug issues, first you have to deal with the economic hopelessness that's driving them. So we call for ending the racist war on drugs uh, and for treating these issues as health issues and discharging from prison the hundreds of thousands of African Americans and people of color, largely, who should not have been locked up in the first place. Unlike the two major political parties, the Greens and other U.S. third parties are ignored by the corporate media shut out of presidential debates, and hindered by ballot access laws and other obstacles. But at a time when about 60% of Americans say a third major political party is needed, and outsider candidates like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are exceeding expectations, third parties could see an increase in support in 2016. In fact, some Bernie Sanders supporters already cite Stein as their second choice should Sanders not get the Democratic nomination, as the Green leader's policies are in line with or more progressive than the Vermont senators. In 2012, more than 83% of Americans were able to vote green. In the end, Stein only received about 470,000 votes, or about 0.36% of the total votes cast. This November, Stein says that more than 85% of citizens will have a green option on the ballot.
For progressives unhappy with Hillary Clinton's record and promises of incremental change, Dr. Jill Stein presents an alternative to the status quo.